We start with ch chapter eight, statistic, and section, sections 8.1 and 8.2. This is hypothesis testing. What I did here, I kind of summarize, you know, chapter eight and into some formulas. We have a formula for proportions, for the mean, and also for standard deviations. And again, for for proportions, we are using this formula, and for mean, there are two, Z and T. It's very similar to what we did in chapter seven, and also for standard deviation, we have the formula for standard deviations. There are two type of method that we use here. One we call it traditional method, and that second method is the p-value method. That p-value method, I show you how to use the calculator and come up with p-value numbers. You know, in this type of problems, you all either have two tails. This is in case of equal sign, or you have left tail if the symbol is less. You have right tails if the symbol is greater. So if the symbol is equal or not equal, then there are two tails, one tail for left, one tail for right. As we go through the example, then you understand better when you use it to just show you how to return to this summary. And this is the examples. Significance level is one of the term we use here, and that shows the area of the tails. So in case you have two tails and significance level, which is alpha, example, if alpha is 5% or 0.05, this is area of two tails. If you want to find area of each tail, you have to divide that by two. So that gives you 0.025. Or if the problem is left tail or just one tail, then this 0.05 would be area of just this tail because you have only one tail. Same here. If you have a right tail or just one tail, this alpha 0.05 is the area of only this one. Section 8.1 and 8.2, we are discussing the proportions. So we are dealing with this formula. And then there are some definition in a statistic. Hypothesis is the claim or a statement about property of populations. Hypothesis test, or they call it test of significance, is a procedure of testing a claim about property of the populations. Now, to give you a very simple examples, what we really discuss in this section is this. You know, let's say I go and buy a bottle of water. This is just the examples, okay? And this bottle, I'm trying to hide it. Okay, in this bottle, there is a claim here that, uh, right here. They are claiming that we have 16.9 ounce of water in here, right? 16.9 ounce. So they claim Call it original claim. Their original claim is that, let's say, weight of their bottle is 16.9 ounce. So we call that we have two term that we are using here, HO and H1. One of them is the claim and the other one is the rejection of the claim. For instance, if they say, okay, the weight of the bottle is 
16.9 ounces, then what we do is this. We take some samples. We go to manufacturer and we take some samples. We go ahead and bring those samples in the lab and we weight them. We weight them and we take the average to see if the average in fact is 16.9 ounces. If the average is 16.9 ounces, then we accept the claim. If the average is not that, then we reject the claim. So this section, we basically talk about somebody claim something and then you have to either prove it or reject it. How would you do that? You have to do some investigation by collecting some samples and do your research. We claim about the proportions, which we are losing the letter of P. We are claiming about the mean, mean of populations. We claim about a standard deviations of the populations. So there are three type of claim about the proportion, about the mean, and about a standard deviation. <clears throat> so for instance here, look, they're saying, these are some examples. The mean body temperature of human is less than 98.6. So they're claiming that mean is less than 98.6 Fahrenheit. This is their claim. Or here, next example, they say the proportion of consumer not comfortable with the drone deliveries is greater than 0.5. Their claim is about proportion. Proportion is greater than 50% or 0 0.50. So this is a claim about the proportions. Or they make a claim about the standard deviation. The population of the college student has IQ scores with a standard deviation equal to 15. So they claim that the standard deviation is 15. See, these are three different claims one claim is about the proportion, the second about, um, uh, about the mean, the second about the proportion, and the third one about the standard deviation. <clears throat> now, we are using two letter here. One is HO and H1. One is the claim, the other one is accept or rejection of that claim, okay? And one is HO and H1. H1 can always take equal sign, can take greater sign or less sign. But HO always take equal sign. What does that mean? Here, I want to write H O and H one. Okay, H O. They call it null hypothesis. And H one. They call it alternate. Hypothesis. Okay, so for the first one, we claim that mean is less than 98.6 Fahrenheit, right? So our claim is H1, 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. What is opposite of this? Opposite is mean is not, is equal to 98.6. See, that's how you determine your H1, H1. They're opposite of each other. So if the original claim, if the original claim is that mean is less than 98.6, we get a proof, you either, we are able to prove it or we accept it. 
So if we prove that mean is not less, is equal, then we reject the original claim. Or if the claim is that proportion is, so original claim is that proportion is greater than 50%. So that would be the H1. Why? Because H will always take equal sign. So our alternative hypothesis is this, which is the original claim. And opposite of that is HO. So if you want to reject the claim, somehow we have to do some investigation and prove it that no, proportion is equal, is not. Or sometimes you could say it's, it's equal or less. Now, the, there is a claim that a standard deviation is 15. See, in this case, original claim, which is a standard deviation is 15, it happened to be HO. Why? Because HO always take the original claim, right? So original claim is this, so we have to prove otherwise. So these two are always equal. Now, in case it said greater, we always deal with one tail and is the right tail because it has a greater sign. In case H1 is less, then is the left tail. One tail and left tail, this is right tail. So what determine whether it's left tail or right tail or two tail is H1. H1 is not equal, that means whether it's not equal or equal is always two tails. Two tails, okay? So let's assume significance level. The alpha, they call it significance level. Alpha is area of the tails. In this case, is this area. Normally we use 0 0.05. Alpha is 0 0.05. So in this case, alpha is this area. In the right case, alpha 0 0.05 is area of this one. But in case of two tails, alpha is area of tails. So if you want to find area of each, you get to take that and divided by two. So area of each tail is 0 0.025. Okay, so in case, again, when H1 is less, is the left tail. Significance level is area of the tail in this case. We call it alpha. If alpha is 5% or 0 0.05 means this area is 0 0.05. If alpha is for one tail and the right tail, how do I know it's the right tail? Because the sign of H1 is greater. In case sign of H1 is equal or not equal, always two tails. But in that case, alpha is area of tails. So we have to divide by two to find area of each tail. So here they talk about HO and H1. See, alternative hypothesis, which is H1 can always take less, greater, or not equal. HO always take equal sign. I put it here. This one be some sign. Now, this 
this is the process of how we work on the claim. When we went through the example and work on the example, then it's easier if you go back and check here rather than going through all these instructions here. But what is important is this table here, table 8.1. This table is telling you that, hey, if you have two tail tests and is 99%, your significant level is 0 0.01. If you have one tail is 98%, the significant level is 0 0.01, 0 0.05, is 40. So you kind of remember to use this for some of the problems, okay? Table 8.1, confidence interval method. Again, here is discussing HOC, H always take equal sign, but H1 can be one of these three. But HO always take the equal sign. The formula page that I show you in the beginning is kind of summarized here too. Section 8.1 and 8.2, we are talking about proportions, so we are using this formula. In case of greater, is always right tail. In case of H1 is less, is left tail. See, depend on the symbol of H1. If H1 is not equal, then it's two tails. See, H1 greater, H1 less, H1 not equal. Not equal two tails, less left tail, greater right tail. There, is, there are two methods to use. One, they call it p-value method. We explain that later on when we go through the examples. This is an important part that the second method, which is the p-value method, we always compare the p-value is the value that we find through the calculator. It, and we always compare that with alpha, which is significant level. So if the p-value is less than alpha, we reject HO. If p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject. Fail, you know, fail to reject or accept is the same thing. So when you go through the problems, I use accept instead of saying fail to reject, I use accept HO. This is like a negative time, negative is positive, okay? So if you see fail to reject, and I stated in the problem, accept means the same thing. Fail to reject HO means I accept HO. Again, this is a chart that when you go to the problem, then you understand here. And then they are describing type one and type two errors. You know, <clears throat> type one and type two error basically means if I, um, let's say we have this, we have uh, HO is 50%. You know, the ch ch chance of having a baby, is, uh, it, it having the girl for a couple to have a girl might be 50%, right? But the, there is a company who claimed that if you use their medications, your chance of having a baby is greater than 50%. So this is what they claim, H1. And we have to prove that, no, that's not true. It is, it's not greater, it's equal. So if the proportion is already 50%, as a matter of fact, it's 50%, and we reject it and we say no, then this is, they call it type 1 error means we reject HO by mistake. We don't really use that often, but I, I still have to talk about this. So if you are doing the problems, you do your evaluation and you say, okay, we um, reject HO and that's the mistake, they call this type one error. What is type two error? Let's say the company who give you give a medication 
to have more 60% of girls and chance of having girls 70%, chance of girls 80% or 90%. This is what they claim. And we have to prove, no, the chance still is 50%. So here, let's say in reality, proportion of having more than 60 or 70 is correct. Let's say what they said, it was correct, but we reject it. So by mistake, we accept HO means we reject their claim. This type, this procedure that was more than 60, 70, 80, 90 percent, which actually was true and we rejected, they call this error number two. So it's just two, two part, type of the error. One is when what they actually claim it was correct, but we rejected. Type one is what they were um, claiming was not and we accepted. Okay? So this is the explanation of what you have here. And I don't know if we do have any problem related to this, but you know, still have to talk about it. This is related to that, that, you know, if, if your alternative uh, value is 60%, if they claim that chance of having a girl for that, uh, if using that procedure is greater than 60%, in that case, power of testing is 18%. There is an 18% chance of rejection, means mistake. If they claim that, oh, if you use our medication or our use, apply our procedure, chance of having a girl is 90%, then there is 98.8% of making a mistake and rejecting their claim. Again, these are all related to error number one and error number two. Now in 8.2, this is a formula we are going to use. So now I go to the examples. All right. <clears throat> in chapter pro problems, there is a Pitney Bow survey in which 1,009 consumers were asked if they are comfortable with having drone deliver their purchases. So N value, the value of N is 1,009. 54% of them responded with no. See, we have the N value. P hat is proportion of the samples. Proportion of the samples is p hat, which is x over n. <clears throat> Let's say that you, you collect 100 bottles and 30 of them are not good. So what's the proportion of defective? 30 over 100, that's what p hat means. Test the claim, always look at the statement that said test the claim, because that would determine your h1, h1. Test the claim that most consumer are uncomfortable with the drone derivative. We interpret most to means more than or greater than 0.5. So claim is more than 50%. So right here, look, H1 is, they claim that proportion is greater than 50%. This is original claim, OC. What is opposite of this HO that you say no is equal? So a statement said, test the claim that greater than 50%. This is the claim greater than. And we have to prove that <clears throat> is not greater is equal. This is opposite of that, okay? So. N is already given, 1009, X is 545. So we find the P hat, P hat is the proportion of the sample. It's given in the problems, they said it's 54%, right? But you could still calculate that. There are two conditions. Before we do the problem, we have to make sure that these two conditions are met. What are those? You take the value of N and multiply by P, this one, 
and n times q. Q is always 1 minus p, right? Q is, you understand, 1 minus the value of p. So both are, in this case, both are 50%. So if the outcome is greater than 5 is a large number, then you could continue with the problem. So make sure that NP and NQ both are greater than five. So in that case, first we are using, they call it traditional method. Traditional method is this. You find the Z, they call it test statistic. P hat minus P. P hat, we already understand is 54.54. P is 0.50. And you put those here too. Test of Z of calculation is 255. Okay, now we need to compare this with the Z value that we obtained through the graph. Remember, when H1 is greater, that means you have one tail and is a right tail. So in that case, It is a right tail, and when is a right tail and significance level is 0 0.05, then we have to find the Z value. If this tail area is 0 0.05, what is left? What about this area? It's one minus that 0 0.95, right? So now you either go through the table A2 to see if the area is 0.95, what is the Z value? Or the best way is to just go and find it through the calculator. Inverse norm, remember? Inverse norm means you have to give a calculator area to the right of that point, which in this case is 0.95. Calculator will give you a value of 1.64. Z through the graph is 1.64. So that means if your significance level is 0.05, the Z value of the graph is 1.64. Now, this 2.55, which you find it through the calculation, if that fall into the critical area, you always reject HO. So eventually we get a kind of memorize that. If number through the calculations fall into the critical area, then you reject HO and therefore you have to accept the claim. So then here, we accept the claim and reject HO. How do I do it with the second method? With the second method, you use your calculator and you find the p-value. I'll show you how to use a calculator to find the p-value on the next example. If the p-value is less than significance level, then you always reject HO, which when we calculate the p-value is 0 0.005, which is less than significant level of 0 0.05. So we reject that, okay? P-value is, you know, he, see how you have the Z equal to 255 when you do the calculations? <clears throat> If the value of Z is 2.55, what is this area? That's what p-value means. Means when you calculate the Z, this Z of 255, what area does that give you? Then you take that and compare with 0.05, significant level, which is also the area of the tail. So you compare area of the tail to the significant level with area of the tails to the calculations. So this is what p-value means. P-value means the area of the tail when z is 2.55. But the calculator will do it for you. So but just for you to understand what is the p-value. P-value is the area of the tail when z is 2.55. Okay, so when I go to the next page, then I'll show you also the calculator. 
Now, in this one, using the same, let me put this a little bit higher so you could see it better. Using the same sleepwalking data from example 10, N is given, P hat is given, means proportion of the sample also is given 29.2%. 29.2% is 29.2 divided by 100, which is 0.92. Would a reporter be justified in stating that fewer than 30% of the adult have sleepwalk? Let's take 5% significant level. Test the claim. See, I start from here. For you to determine your H1, you gotta look for this statement. Test the claim that adult populations who have a sleepwalk is less than 0.3, is less than 0.3, okay? So in that case, this is the claim. They're claiming that proportion is less than 0.30. We understand the H1, they call it alternative hypothesis, and also in this case is the original claim. What is opposite of original claim? Equal. So this is how to determine your H0 and H1. H1 is through the claim. Claim that proportion, see proportion here, is less than, proportion is less than 0.3, that's your claim. And opposite is equal. Okay, so we have to do the Z of calculation again. First, you have to check the requirement. Requirement is N times P, P is 0.3, times N, which is this very large number. And Q, of course, is one minus that. So that gives you two large numbers, obviously they are greater than five, so that's okay. We met the requirement, we could go ahead and do the calculations. In the formula, you need P hat. P hat is given in the problems. They say 29.2%. 29.2% is the P hat. We just put it here. You wonder, so if, if, you, if P hat is given, why we're using the, why we're calculating X, I'll show you later. But right now, remember, P hat is given. So you put that here. Capital P is 0.3. Q is one minus that. That gives you minus 2.41. This is Z of calculations, okay? Now, the, sim the sign of H1 is less. That means is one tail and is left tail. Okay, see, is one tail and it is a left tail. So now you could either use table A2 or I think when, if you want to find a Z, go to second verse inverse norm and area to the left is 0 0.05 because significant level was 0 0.05. Significance level is area of, in this case, one tail. The calculator give you minus 1.64. That is the Z of the graph. You have the Z of graph minus 1.64. Where does this fall? Minus two is less than minus one. So that fall into a critical area. When your number fall into critical area, we always reject HO. We always reject HO, that means we get it reject HO and accept the claim, accept H1. Now, I explained that here. So anytime your Z of calculation fall into a critical area, you must reject the HO. Now, I want to show you how to use a calculator. If you want to verify your number, how do I verify these numbers here? And how do I also find the p-value, the second method, okay? On your calculator, you go to stat test. You go to stat test and 
Number eight. Is it? Let me see. It asks you for, let me put it something higher so you can see it better. Okay, so sample, uh, no, that's not the right one, I'm sorry. Number five, let's go back there, is that? Test. Number five, proportion Z test. Okay, the value of P in our case was 0 0.30. X. See, that's why we need to calculate the X. If you want to use the calculus, see the problem give me P hat and N. They didn't give us the X. We didn't need the X for the formula, but if you want to use the calculator, you need to have the X. How do I find the X? Just multiply these two numbers, which is 5588, right? So we put that one here, 5588. N. The value of N, what was the value of N here? 19,136. Now, which one of those three, H1 always determined? What was the H1 symbol? H1 is less. So, screw to the left, enter. Okay, so, so far I have the capital, this PO, just ignore that, just say capital, capital P is 3%, I mean 0 0.3, I'm sorry, 5,588 is your X, N is 19,136, H1 is less, so we put that and calculations. So it gives you the Z value of minus 2.41, you see that? That would verify these numbers. P hat is 0.29, we already know that. Now, what is this P value here? Look, this is the P value I was telling you. P value method is using this number, 0 0.0079. See here now? Point zero zero seven nine is the P value from the calculator. If the p-value from the calculator is less than alpha, reject HO. Alpha is significance level is given in the problem is 0 0.05 or 5%. See, our p-value from the calculator is less than that. So we have to reject HO. Remember, these two methods must match. If you reject HO here, you should also reject HO. These two must match. In that case, you know your problem is correct. Okay, so this is a number that you find from the calculator. And if this number is less than alpha, you always reject HO and accept H1. So the calculator would actually verify this number for you. This is another one. The drug oxygen putina, oxycodone, is used to treat pain, but it's dangerous because it's addictive and can be lethal. In clinical trial, 220 subjects were treated. That's the N value. 52 of them developed nausea. So that is your X, 52 out of 227. Now, significance level is 0 0.05. And then again, look at this statement that has test a claim. Test a claim that 20% of oxycodone user develop nausea, more than 20%, see? More than 20%. That means, are 
H1 is proportion is greater than 20%. That's the original claim. What's the opposite of that? Equal to 20%. Requirement. Is NP and NQ greater than five? Yes. X and N are given in the problem, so you could calculate the P hat. P hat is X over N, which is 0.23. You put them in the problems, the formula. That gives you the Z. Now, is it left tail, right tail, or two tails? It's greater. H1 determine the, whether it's the right, left, or two tail. H1 is greater. That means you have right tail. So significance level, which is given in the problems area of this tail. If this is 0 0.05, what is the remaining? 0 0.95. Remember when you use the Z table, table A2 always calculate the area to the left. So even if you want to use a calculator formula, here, the second verse, inverse north, you should always give a calculator area from that point to the left, which is 0.95. Calculator will give you 1.64. If this is 1.64, if the border point, the point that if you go beyond, you fall into the critical area is 1.64, Ours is 1.09. We don't fall into the critical. We actually fall into a good area. So we accept HO. We don't reject HO anymore. We accept it. See, when you accept HO, then you have to reject H1. When we accept HO means we reject H1. So we reject our claim. So comparison of the calculations and this would tell you which one is correct? P-value method. You know, you, you use the method I show you how to use the calculator. And when you do that, the calculator would give you this number, 0 0.137. 0 0.137 is greater than alpha. If your P-value is greater than alpha, accept HO. So again, these two must match. See how we accept here and we accept here? So you could verify these numbers by going to the calculator again. See? The p value is 0.2. X is 52. N is 227. It is a right tail, right? Because H1 is this. And then you calculate. That would verify your number. See, 1.09, 1.09. That's your number here. And what is the value of P? 0.1367 or 0.137, right? That would be this value. So calculator, it give you the value of P and also they verify your calculations. And this is another example. In this example, again, what's the original claim here? Test the claim that under the same circumstances, 25% of office spring will be yellow. This is a claim, look. I should correct this one first. HO happened to be the original claim now.
something on your document, please correct this one. So if you go ahead and we do the calculation 0 0.67 and then 0 0.67 fall here. So we accept HO and reject the claim. I shouldn't say reject, I'm sorry. We accept HO and here accept the claim because HO happened to be claim. And when 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 H1 is not equal, it's two tails, remember? It just one thing you need to remember in case of see p value always compare area with the area, right? Significance level here is 0 0.01 in these problems. This is significance level. This is the total area, right? But the area that you find through the calculator, because that area is for one tail, you always have to multiply that by two. See, when I go to the calculator, the calculator give me the value of P value of 0 0.50, but remember you have to multiply that by two because it's two tail. In this case, you have to multiply and then compare with your significance level. Okay, so that would be end of section 8.3.